their squad a massive coup in terms of who they get as coach and several other things to go drastically wrong for other people. I think they're beyond they're beyond the point of where it's in their control now. It they need snookers at this point. Yep. Because Salford are just one win away from them not even being able to just beat Salford and have a chance. So yeah. Uh, 1895 Cup finals it was as well this weekend, Tim. Um both free to air but only on the R League platform. It's a shame they didn't throw those out on YouTube as well, I feel, but so be it. Um the first semi final was York thirty six, Swinton twenty two. Despite spirited effort from Swinton, I think York were, were good enough to win. We had a couple of fan views on this. Yeah. Paul O'Brien, PRB the Viking, said York just too good for a spirited Swinton side. Oh, God, I just said that. I said the same thing Paul said. <laughs> it means we saw the same thing, so that's fair. <laughs> uh, a close first half with York just edging it at half time. Poor discipline cost Swinton in the second half, with York increasing their lead. A good game to watch. Yeah, and, you know, some decent play from, from the Lions, as we always see, but York had a very experienced side on there. Um, <sighs> Kerman did some good stuff in the game, and then Mikey Lewis added a touch of class, and the game that really sealed, the trial that really sealed it late on um, was, was him showing his, his ability and pace. Yeah, and Tom Andrews said exactly that, that Mikey Lewis looks a talent. Well, yeah, yes, yeah. he does. Yeah. But... Uh, Featherstone 24, Witness 18 was the other se- semi-final. Um, what have we got from the fan views? Paul O'Brien again says, after 13 minutes, it was over. The c- then the comeback was on. Smarter play and better ball control, we could have won this. But more guts and determination than we have shown all season. We can learn from this both the good and bad bits and build for the rest of the season. Yep. Mark Butler said, a mostly positive experience as my app wasn't working when Featherston ran right early doors. For most of the rest of it, Featherston still seemed to have enough to keep witness at arm's length um, despite a big improvement to close the gap. It went a bit wild near the end as a few opportunities to tie the scores opened up and were butchered. It probably would have been a bit of a robbery for witness to pinch this though. Tom Andrews said, turned out to be an enjoyable game when it looked like it was going to be a whitewash Found myself cheering witness on as they looked to win it before self-combusting two or three times. Yeah, every time you sort of thought they were going to, like, just about do it, the play went totally wrong. So, like, Matt Cook threw a ridiculous forward pass when they basically had the right edge defence of... Featherston on toast and it, it should have been a score and then the on the other side of the field not long after Jake Spedding who'd been good in the game um, had done everything he needed to do as much as he could to put his winger into space but Dean Cross instead of Dion Cross instead of trying to go with him on his shoulder to take the outside as a winger should be able to he started to come back inside just as Spedding was passing the ball so the ball ended up in touch. Um, so, yeah, and they were key moments right at the end of the game that could have seen it at least get tied up, especially with Tyra kicking. You'd expect him to kick it from anywhere. So, um, so yeah, unlucky in the end after being miles out of it in the first 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And Adam Lawton um, is just too tall for opponents <laughs> he reached out for one of his tries he must have been about three meters out from the line when he started to reach out but he got it down anyway so moving into the championship it finished halifax 46 sheffield 12 and bradford on their postage stamp bradford 31 newcastle 12 uh, and in League One, where it was a, a full round five of fixtures, it was West Wales 10, Barrow 60, Workington 34, Keighley 20, North Wales 36, Coventry 12, Doncaster 46, the London Scholars 12, Hunslet 36, Rochdale 22, maybe life yet in Hunslet. Um, so for the standings, that means Barrow stay 100%, with Workington and Doncaster on 80%, Keithley, Rochdale, Scholars, Coventry, North Wales and Hunslet all have 40%, with West Wales yet to get off the mark at the bottom. What have you made from the early goings of League One, Tim? 
Um, I think fitness is is going to be much more of an issue this year than it has normally. Both the game speeding up, the general low fitness base because of not having played for at least a year and sometimes a little bit longer for a lot of players, and also the back-to-back nature of the compressed season. So because of the decision to try and start as late as possible and compress all the games so there's no off the only off week is the challenge cup and it's straight through till september and it's a you know it's quite a brutal schedule for players and staff i know um because of some rearrangements in in coventry terms we've now got four uh home games on the spin so we've got four more home game four home games week week after week and then we've only got two left for the rest of the season that's, it just makes it so hard to budget and things, doesn't it? I suppose yeah. if 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 they if they can get some fans back in for some of those, it'll be a big help. Yeah, I mean, it'd be yeah, they've got they've had fans back for the last two, so um, yeah, it's yeah, but again, it's limited. It, it's there's no pay on the day. It's all pre-booked walk up, no walk up. So it does limit the numbers you get, especially um, so last Sunday when it was a nice sunny day. You think you probably would have. I probably would have put 50 on the gate on, on a normal week, but uh, not to be, unfortunately. But, yeah, it's going to be quite quite weird, and then um, it will almost be like we're through most of the season after after the middle of July. And from what you've seen, does it seem about right that there's, like, six teams who've, who've won two of the five games so far? <laughs> All taking yeah, I think off so. Each other? I mean, I've, I've seen all of those play bar Hunslet now and um, for one thing or another and it, it does seem to be a pack there or thereabouts. Rochdale I've seen Den Perry, I mean Andy Raisey um, come out this evening and say that they've got a, a large injury situation I think a lot of clubs are facing that I think the, there's the lack of recovery time um, in particular is, is impacting lots of clubs and it's going to be, I think, you know, give it a month or two, I think we could yeah, you know, there could be quite a few loans from Super League clubs sending players out, partly for experience, but partly just to make up numbers. Um, but I think it, it is quite even. I, and I think Workington uh, look a cut above from what I've seen. So we shall see. Yep, good stuff. Uh, round 13 of the NRL, a condensed round. Dragons 52, Broncos 24. Farnworth, the only Brit on show this weekend, got 133 metres. Uh, West Tigers 26, Panthers 6. We did get a fan viewing on this upset of sorts. Yep, David Hunter said, even though it was against a depleted Panthers team, the West Tigers looked like they're beginning to turn the corner. They have so much potential. Panthers won't care at the end of the season, but their perfect record is gone. This maybe shows that when injury hits, the Panthers are a little more vulnerable than teams like the Roosters or the Storm. I mean, it's the genius effect, isn't it? He comes in and he's a wizard. <laughs> I think it's more the origin effect, and I don't. He's, even prob- if the he's probably not even arrived yet. But some yeah. injuries. I'd... No, he's not, because he's got the combis to coach, hasn't he? In two oh, weeks, yes, yet. yeah, or three weeks, whenever it is. Um, I think it's more the fact that the Panthers were so depleted, and even if injuries hit. You know, you'd have to think that they'd be very unlucky to lose all of their origin players to injuries. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, uh, big win for the West, though. Uh, Storm 20, Gold Coast 14, and Knights 4, Eels 40 with the other scores. In the standings, that means the Panthers lose their perfect record but stay top on 24 points. The Storm is second on 22, with Eels third on 20, and Ravitos fourth on 18. Roosters of 16 points before a gap back to three clubs on 12, who are the Dragons, the Sea Eagles and the Cowboys. The Warriors top a group of four who are just outside the top eight on 10 points, along with West Tigers, Titans and Knights. Sharks, Raiders, Broncos and Bulldogs complete the table in that order. We did get a fan view in from a another game outside of the professional and semi-professional ranks, Tim. We did. It was uh, Dewsbury Moor versus Dewsbury Celtic. And this came in from Callum Percy in brackets, Wigan drummer. So why he's not been sent to the Hague yet, I don't know. Um, but went down to this game on Saturday and was pleased to say there was easily just short of 1,500 people for a great game that finished 2016 to the more. Great to see for the amateur game. 
it did this fan view did nearly inspire me to do an entire Shannon Matthews themed quiz for you um but <laughs> but no this is you know it, it is great stuff for the for the amateur game to get so many people turning out because it's you know it's been a tough time for all rugby league clubs um for, in all levels of the game and you know when you've got clubs in in areas like this they they need to have some backing and this is the kind of backing they can get and sounds like it was a cracker as well with it being a close score line too on a what will have been a wonderful day I'm sure in West Yorkshire um that is all of the other results from all around the world of rugby league they're covered which is great we're now going to move on to our predictions for the next week in rugby league <laughs> So, Tim, we're going to make some guesses for what's going to happen this week. We're going to start with round nine of the Super League, which starts on Thursday night, 7.45pm on Sky and also three, uh, three, free to air on YouTube. So check out the Sky Sports channels on YouTube. I think it's geo-blocked outside the UK, but if you're in the UK, because they've obviously got other broadcast deals there, but if you're in the UK find it or if you've got a vpn put yourself in the uk and find it to watch for free which is fantastic hopefully we'll get tons of fan reviews off the back of that but what do you think those fan reviews will tell us about the game between castleford and hull fc tim i think uh hull fc will come out winners on this one by i think they'll be fired up um and they'll be looking to to get back on it and i think they'll have used the defeat well I think Hodgson, yeah, Hodgson is showing he's quite a smart coach, and I think he will be able to use that to his advantage. And so I'm going to say Hull FC by ten points. Yeah, I think Cass will have kind of geared everything towards that cup game, and then if they kind of, even if they just knock ten percent off, it, it's it's going to be a problem because Hull are still a good side this year, and kind of like the way they went in the second half of that game will have galvanised them all and and Hodgson can create this kind of us against the world mentality as well with the incident with Farge that they're obviously caught up about so I think Hull too I, I'm going to say Hull by six Fair enough on Friday at 7.45 it's Huddersfield against Wigan um... First time I'll be back in the stadium assuming the tickets Great. get delivered because they've not come yet and I'm a bit worried about that but uh, and I'm away for two days now so I won't find out but, hopefully uh, hopefully Mr Cowbell will be there to welcome you yeah but um, I can't wait I, I'm genuinely so excited uh, but I don't think we're going to win I think Huddersfield are pretty much back to full fitness Wigan <clears throat> are hopefully going to welcome back Oliver Gildart which will make a difference to our attack but at the same time there's no Zach Hardacre and no Bevan French so that's an issue that we need to address and our forwards you know we haven't signed anyone so our forwards are just as weak as they've been um, <laughs> and on, on, so on that basis I, I kind of think Huddersfield will have the better pack and then we'll win the game and, and I'm going to go the Giants by four uh, I think Wigan will still will still do this. I, I think Huddersfield haven't really got enough. They've, they've shown flashes, but I, I don't think they've quite got the quality, even with the mismatch and, and sort of cobbled together nature of Wigan a, a bit. I think Wigan by eight points. Fair enough. Also at 7.45pm kickoff on Friday, Hull KR versus Salford. This is a... Uh... An intriguing one for your Robins, Tim. Yeah, I mean it's um, it's who comes eleventh uh, Belusa, isn't it? Um, I think KR at home with a, with a bit of a crowd should see them do enough. I'm going to say KR by twelve. I Hull KR are like the hardest team to predict this year um, because they've done quite well so far they're safe already basically from what they've done so far and that was a bonus from what we kind of expected from the start of the season i 
I have a sniff that Salford will grind this one out. So I'm going to go Salford by two. I've, it's nothing more than just a hunch.